if it's something that's happening at just point A, you would just write A. Some people will put it in square brackets, and that's fine. If you put it in parentheses, that means it's from A to A, but doesn't include A, which means it doesn't exist. So this is at time A. If something happens, so B to C, what would this tell us? Not including B, not including C. But it does include everything in between. Because the times we're involved here, something could happen at A, between A and B, at B, between B and C, at C, between C and D, and at D. Those are the, basically, you could list it out separately like that, or you could just chunk them, sum them together. You always have the option of writing it out clearly in words, if you feel like writing. Anyway, take five minutes, come up with what you think when the position is plus, minus, or zero, when the displacement is, when the velocity is, when the acceleration. Uh, do note, because I haven't put any qualifying adjectives into it, this is the overall displacement, and these are the instantaneous values. And if you need me to read my handwriting up here, just ask. What is the bottom sentence in? The bottom what? The moment just before the ball touches the ground. Feel free to talk to the person next to you about this. It's how you make money in physics. Where is, so given our four times there, or not four times, given the four times in, in between the seven seconds, when is the position positive? is A to D, and then not applicable. Over here on this presentation, I would just write positive, positive, positive. All right. When is the displacement? Well, why do we, it's sometimes easier just to figure out when it's zero and then go from there. When is the displacement zero? A and C. Okay, so A and C, no brackets or parentheses, it's just those moments. So over here, it would be A and C. When is the displacement positive? From D. Shout out, go for it. Well, different answer. Um, um, I had from A to D. Inclusive or exclusive? Exclusive. Okay. So A to C. So positive, positive, positive. And when is it negative? Um, C to D, uh, the exclusive, and inclusive. Okay.
unless I make a mistake in setting up the problem. And it has happened before. You cannot go from plus to positive to negative or negative to positive without going through zero. Just keep that in mind. You've got to go through zero. There's no rip in the space-time continuum in these problems. That's out of scope for Physics 151. All right, velocity. When is the velocity zero? Does anyone want to stand up and go, Kelly, what happened to you? You used to know things. You're so wrong. Or does anyone want to stand up and go, Kelly, we're with you. We're with you. <laughs> A couple people voicing them with it. I appreciate that. All right, so when is the velocity? So B is zero. When is the velocity positive? From A, B, A, A to B, excluding B. And when is it negative? From excluding B to B, uh, D, excluding B. Say it again. Like the speed of the direction is going. Yes. Velocity doesn't care about where you are, it just cares about which way you're going, as far as direction goes. All right. And now the one, I'm curious, the dot acceleration. Bro, are you feeling good with yours? I feel pretty good. All right. So. Should we give her a chance, or someone else want to chime in? Someone else before. All right, Luis. Behind you, he believes in you. All right, bro, go for it. So uh, I have it at, uh, as positive from B to D. From B to D, including or excluding? Excluding B. Excluding B. So you have it positive, 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 positive. Yes. Uh, don't write that down yet. <laughs> Did you want to keep going? Um, and then I have it as negative from A to B. Including B? Um, I'm honestly not sure. All right, so first off, again, there's a mistake here. What has to be wrong with this? Before, without, if I just didn't even give you this situation, what would be wrong with this? Well, it has to accelerate upwards. Uh, not the issue I was thinking of. There's no zero between the... That's the problem. You're going from negative to positive without going through zero. So there's got to be an issue there. So the question is, where would zero be? B. So if acceleration is zero at B, that means the velocity doesn't change at B. If the velocity doesn't change at B, at B we said it wasn't moving. So if acceleration is zero here, when you throw the ball up, what would it, what would happen to it? It would float. Yes, it would float. So we know it comes back down, so the velocity changes. If velocity and acceleration are opposite signs, what happens to it? What's the question? Stop. 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 All right. Too many voices, not loud enough. All right. If velocity and acceleration are opposite signs, what does the object do? Slows down. Okay, heard it over here. Slows down. Slows down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll assume you said it. No. All right. It slows down. If velocity and acceleration are opposite direct, opposite signs, it slows down. So is it slowing down as it goes up? All right. After point B, the signs are still opposite the way it's written up here. Is it slowing down as it falls? No. Despite what some students have claimed in the past, if it stops and then starts moving, it does speed up. So, what's the acceleration as it falls? Negative. It is negative the entire time. So 
look at that from a slightly different point of view. Um, again, acceleration is the hardest one. Uh, just to sort of to untrain yourself from the the way we speak in everyday language. If I did a time versus velocity, and that's in meters per second, and that's in seconds. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say that it's thrown upwards initially at 30 meters per second. Using the convention of the problem we just did, so up is positive. I'm gonna put this on a planet, uh, which I will refer to as Earth 2. So the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. What this tells us is if I drop an object on Earth 2, it will fall, the velocity will change 10 meters per second every second. Now, because the, this is downwards, gravitational force is pulling downwards, it's going to, the acceleration will be negative, so it'll be 20, 10, zero, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40. If we look at change in velocity, delta V in meters per second. From 30 to 20, what is the change in velocity? From 20 to 10? 10 to zero? Zero to negative 10. It is constant, it's negative the entire time. Ultimately, the only force acting on it after it leaves the hand and before it touches the ground, the only force acting on it is the force due to gravity. And the earth pulls things down, small objects like a ball and us. So that force is downwards the entire time, so the acceleration is negative the entire time as we said, up was positive. Questions to hear? We'll look at this one other way. Given, and to present this slightly differently, we have x greater than zero, equal to zero, less than zero, or yeah, delta x, greater than zero, equal to zero, less than zero. V, greater than zero, equal to zero, less than zero. And frame in acceleration, greater than zero, equal to zero, less than zero. I sometimes wonder if my kindergarten teacher could see the way I write right now, would she just cry? Or go, yeah, I expect it. A, B, 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 C, C, D, 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 Another way of presenting the exact same information. And this is going to lead to the graphing, which we're about to do. Red. All right. So just translating what we have over there, it's positive the entire time. So I just shade all that in. My displacement is zero here and at C, it is positive and it is negative. My velocity starts out positive, then it goes to zero and then it's negative the rest of the time. 
and my acceleration is negative the entire time. On the test, there's four ways that you could present it. These are three of them. The fourth one is very similar to the first one. Please. The last, this is not a test level problem. Um, we will do one, I guess, probably on Tuesday. When you do the test level problem, it says bold print, larger text, larger font size than the rest of it. Choose one of the following formats and answer. Inevitably, don't be the person who does this, but usually there's one person in each class who decides to answer it, all four of them, all four formats. If you do that, please make sure that they agree with each other. It is, I'm never quite sure how to grade something where their answers change as they change the format. I think I've settled upon, take the average and subtract the standard deviation. It's not to your benefit, take one. All right, the graphing. Yeah, I'm getting down on you and you haven't even done it yet. Sorry about that. I'm getting down on you because of previous classes. The emotional scars I live with. So in that particular case, if I was graphing position versus time, I know it's positive the entire time, as is reflected over there and here. I know it starts at some position. If I want to make, I said the ground was zero, so this would represent the ground right here. And it goes up and then down. That would be position first time. Velocity is the change in position over the change in time. So if my position time, so for example, if my position time graph looked like that, what would the velocity be? It would be positive, indeed. I was looking for something more math-oriented than the answer. Like positive time, sorry. If I took two points in time here, So this would be my change in position, and this would be my change in time. What's change in position divided by change in time? Say again. True. I, I hope this doesn't devolve to a read my mind exercise. That's what, That's what I'm going for. Thank you for reading my mind. It's the slope. Velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph. So as I'm looking at this, so this would be point B right here, this was A, uh, and then C and D. My slope is positive until I get to the peak where my slope is zero. Now, if you had, how many here are in calculus or beyond Calc 1? Anyone? We've got two, three. All right. If you're not familiar with finding the slope of a curve, what we're doing here is if I want to find the slope at that point, I draw a tangent line, one that just basically skirts the curve, and what you're actually finding is the slope of the tangent line. So my tangent line is positive, it becomes zero when it's horizontal, and then my slope becomes negative. So my velocity time graph is positive until I get to here, and then it's negative. Well, it's positive until I get to there, and then it's negative. If I graphed my velocity time graph, I know at B, it's zero. Now I happen to know it's gonna be a straight line. There are other variations that 
get into. If this is a parabola, this will be a line uh, with some slope, and then, well, we'll get to acceleration now. Acceleration first time, our acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So if I have a velocity time graph, what is my acceleration? slope again. Acceleration is the slope of the velocity first time graph. Well, my slope is constant here. So my acceleration first time graph, well, it's just going to be negative the entire time. my displacement first time graph look like? Zero. So it'd be... No. Pardon? Position? No, displacement and position are not the same. If you look over here, they do differ. But would the position be Uh, I think we're out of sync here. Okay. So, you're saying that displacement, I heard a couple words there I wasn't expecting. You were saying displacement is the slope of, well, okay. I think I just misheard what you were asking. I'm asking if I graph displacement first time. So displacement, instead of position first time, I want displacement first time. What would that graph look like? In what sense? Ups and downs. Okay, it does go up and down. How does it differ from the position first time graph? 